Hello, brothers and sisters of Christ. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4. We're going to do a reading, and God put something on my heart to share with you, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay? So, 2 Timothy chapter 4 says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead. Quick. Judgment seat of Christ. Those who are saved. And the dead, the lost world, at the great white throne. At his appearing and his kingdom. That's how we know. At his appearing. Judgment seat of Christ happens first. And then at his kingdom, at the end of the thousand year reign, there's going to be the great white throne judgment. But it says here, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Okay, long suffering. Uh, when, you're do, when you're preaching the word, especially in these last days, and you're reproving the lost world, reproving some of the some Christians, brothers and sisters in Christ, rebuking, correcting. Let's see. That's what reprove is, reprove correcting, uh, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering. We're going through a lot of long suffering okay, in doctrine. But why is Paul telling Timothy this? Okay, what's going on in Paul's life? We're going to get to that. What's going on in Paul's life? Verse 3 this is why he's telling Timothy this. For the time will come when they will not endure. I'm going to stop there for a second. Endure. In other words, they start out with verse 2, they get saved. And they start out with verse 2. But what happens? Cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, lusts of other things come along, sin. And they start going the ways of the world. Uh, philosophy, okay? Philosophy and vain deceit. I see. They're spoiled by philosophy and vain deceit. After the rudiments of the world, after the traditions of men, and not after Christ. They start failing to go after Christ and they start going after the world. Okay, it says here they will not endure. In other words, they start out with sound doctrine, but they don't endure. What happens? But after their own lusts, so they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Okay, as we're going to get further down, you're going to see that Paul's experiencing this, and that's why he's warning Timothy, a young man in ministry. Okay, he's warning him. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Full proof of thy ministry. Once again, there it is, we've got to prove ourselves. You want your ministry to be true? Make sure it's being proved. When you're reading this, make sure you have your key, following along with me, make sure you have your King James Bibles open and make them full proof of my ministry. Is what he's teaching based off Scripture. Verse 6, For I am now ready to be offered in the time of my departure is at hand. Let that one sink in. Verse 6, The whole thing that we're not seeing that much today is mentorship, mentoring. Okay? Um, the elder... God will raise people regardless. But the way it's supposed to be is Paul's like, I'm at the end of my rope. But Timothy, I'm teaching you and I'm giving you some last instructions because I'm gone, then there's you. You're supposed to go teach other men also. Other parts of the scripture, he's telling Timothy to make sure you're teaching other men also. Basically pass on what I'm teaching you and what I've trained you and what I've taught you, how to be a man in ministry preaching the word of God. You're supposed to be mentoring other men to do it. Because someday Timothy isn't going to be around. Someday such and so, so and so won't be around. Someday I won't be around if we're here that long. <laughs> the catching away of the body of Christ doesn't happen in my lifetime. Okay? Someday I might not be around. That's what he's saying. We're going to get into this. He's going to, as we get further down, he's going to say that people are leaving for the world. That there's very few men in ministry left, even in Paul's day. But God will raise people up, absolutely. But Paul always warns about this. Let's get to verse 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Is that what you strive for, brothers and sisters in Christ? To say, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Same thing with men in ministry. I've seen so many men in ministry that have 
the capability of being amazing preachers, they just weren't qualified yet. Or they let something get in their life that messed it up and now we don't hear from them that much anymore. Because they've got stuff that's getting in the way of their being able to be in the ministry and be effective in the ministry. I myself have had to step down from the ministry. How many of us can say that? I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. That's what we're striving for. And that's what he's trying to pass on as an example to Timothy. Especially men in ministry. Make sure you're making full proof of your ministry and you fought a good fight. There's some brethren out there that fight fights that aren't good fights. They're reprobate. They're fights that aren't worth fighting. Okay. Uh, one of them is the flat earth versus round earth. People are fighting over that and, and questioning people's salvation over that. Okay, that's not fighting the good fight. Okay. Standing for the true plan of salvation, standing for the word of God is God's perfect, King James Bible is God's perfect written word in English. The major doctrines, eternal security, pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ, the Godhead. Okay. Major doctrines, standing for them. Instruction righteousness, standing for uh, against sin. And not trying to justify it or trying to hide it under liberty. I've seen brethren do that, where they try to hide sin under liberty. And Paul says, you're not supposed to use liberty as an occasion to the flesh. What is liberty? It's a sin issue. When someone says I, it's a liberty issue, the Bible's saying what the Bible's saying is it's a sin issue. I might go back over that study again about liberty. It seems like some brethren still aren't getting it. It's a sin issue. It's not a salvation issue. Right. Make sure you're fighting the good fight. Fight against sin, absolutely. And when you know, don't there's no sin in your life that's worth holding on to that affects your walk with the Lord, that affects your your ability to be useful in ministry to be as useful or as fruitful, uh, that hurts your fellowship with the brethren. Okay? There's no, I'm sorry, there's just no sin in this world that's worth it. The Bible talks about, Paul says, if meat make my brother to offend, I'll eat no meat while the world standeth. Fellowship with the brethren was more important than his personal preferences. Oh, I might have a right to do this, but it's, a, it's a hurting the fellowship with the brethren, so I'm not going to do it. Because fellowship with the brethren is more important. And of course, Paul's talking about the laws of meat, you know, clean meats versus unclean meats. Um, how it'll offend some brethren, eating certain meats in front of them. But the whole point is, is there's some people that are desperate and they're holding on to sin, and they're trying to fight this good fight of holding on to sin and forsaking fellowship with the brethren to hold on to sin. Okay? Are you fighting a good fight, or are you just being a reprobate? In the, in the certain areas where you're fighting. Fighting fights that aren't worth fighting with the brethren, arguing and debating. I mean, we're not to argue and debate with the lost world, but we're not to argue and debate with Christian brothers and sisters in Christ either. The Old Testament talks about debate thy cause with the neighbor. It's one-on-one, -on -one and it's it's talking about if, you, if a brother has a fault, go talk to him one-on-one -on -one and try to win him back. Okay, it's not talking about putting on a show and letting everybody see how wrong that person is so you feel better about yourself. That's not what it's supposed to be about. Mm -hmm. And that's why Paul, even in the New Testament, that's why Paul says debating is under a list of things that are not good, they're sin. Make sure you're fighting the good fight. Because there's going to come a day when you're going to finish your course. And God's going to say, hey, it's time, come up hither. Whether it's just your soul because you die, or because of the catching away of the body of Christ. You're going to finish your course someday. I have kept the faith. The Bible talks about there's going to be a falling away in these last days. And boy, is there ever a falling away in these last days. There's fewer and fewer... We used to say there was few Bible-believing, God-fearing Christians left. Well, out of those few Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women around the world that are left... Fewer and fewer of them are still standing. They're not fainting. They're not faltering. Okay, make sure that you keep standing, brother, sister, Christ. It's just sometimes it feels like we're fall, dropping like flies. Verse 8. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness with the Lord the righteous judge shall give me on that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. 
that those two verses when you read it, it says I'm ready let's go back to six it says for I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand I have fought the good fight I have finished my course I have kept the faith henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness with the Lord the righteous judge shall give me on that day and not to me only but unto all them that love his appearing I've always preached this brothers and sisters Christ looking for the coming of Jesus Christ when you're looking it's not setting out here, even though I like to sit out here sometimes and look at the clouds and talk to the Lord about when He's going to come back, what's it going to be like in heaven for the seven years of time of Jacob's trouble, what's it going to be like in the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ, and out into the future. There's nothing wrong with sitting there looking at stuff, but what the Bible teaches, if you're truly loving the appearing of Jesus Christ, it's going to reflect by the life that you're living. Are you living for Jesus Christ? Have you fought the good fight? Are you keeping the faith? Instruction and righteousness, the, the major doctrines, the true plan of salvation, the real Jesus Christ of Scripture. It's a hard one for a lot of people. A lot of these false converts out there. We show them that, hey, your Jesus doesn't line up with Scripture. And everything they do is reprobate. It's vain. But that's the whole point of looking for Jesus Christ. And what's, Paul, what's going on with Paul? He's looking and he's seeing men that take their eyes off Jesus Christ and they start putting it on the world. You go back to verse number um, 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and shall turn away their ears from the truth and, be tur and shall be turned into fables. What's going on? They've taken their eyes off Jesus Christ. They've taken their eyes off Jesus Christ and they've put it on the world. Verse 9, do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. Verse 10, here's where we get the proof of what I'm saying, what Paul's saying. There are men falling away. They're saved, but they're falling away. Verse 10, for Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and has departed unto Thessalonica. Now stop there. Well, how do we know that this is talking about men in ministry? How do we know that? Well, as I was doing my reading, let's see if we can find it. Here it is. It's um, flip over to Philemon, only one chapter. You get down to verse 23. There salute thee, Ephraim, my fellow prisoner in Jesus Christ. Verse 24. Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers. He's talking about men in ministry. So when you get back over here in Timothy where it says, For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and has departed unto Thessalonica, it's talking about men in ministry. This brother in Christ has gone the way of the world. I've only been in ministry for three years, but even in the three years that I've been in ministry, a little bit over three years, that I've been in ministry, I've seen brethren fall away, even that they wanted to be in ministry, and now they're not in ministry anymore. Uh, they've gone the way where I've seen brothers who just, they go off to the left. I left, I see, i got to do the right direction. <laughs> they go off to the left and they start teaching things that are against Scripture because they're trying to justify sin. They have sin in their life. And they start making a mess of the Scriptures to try to justify that sin. Right? This isn't talking about, when we get here when he says only Luke is with me, it's not talking about that Paul had no Christians around him except Luke. It's talking about men in ministry. And in these last days, we're desperate for men in ministry to stand up and preach the Word of God. Your house has to be in order. This house has to be in order. Your regular, I mean, physical house has to be in order. Okay, it talks about how the deacons and bishops, okay, if you're going to be preaching and teaching the Word of God, you need to make sure you line up with a deacon, an elder in the, in the church, or someone who's actually going to be a pastor, want to be called a pa uh, have a t not the title but a description of a pastor bishop mm -hmm. you got to have things in order but there's very few of us that are still preaching the word and standing for absolute truth so let's go back here for Demas hath forsaken me having loved this present world and has departed unto Thessalonica now it goes it says Crescens to Galatia now notice it doesn't say he fell away it just said he had to send him over here to Galatia. It might mean that he fell away too. There could be this big falling away with even in Paul's time when it comes to men in ministry. 
He might have fallen away to the world and went over here. But here it says, Titus unto Dalmatia. Then you read there's a letter to Titus that Paul writes. Okay? Some of these he's saying were spread thin. There's very few of us men in ministry left were spread thin. So because there's so many people that need the word of God preached unto them, we have some falling away. And we've got all these groups calling us, writing us letters saying, Hey, come preach to us. We need preachers. We need preachers. It's like, there's only few of us. We're going to have to travel around. As we, if you read, when you read about um, Titus, and you read about fine lemon, they're, they're traveling around from city to city trying to preach to people. There's all these people who want the Word of God, but there's just few shep uh, There's a lot of sheep, but few shepherds preaching the Word of God. Okay, there's the shepherd, Jesus Christ. You know? But you know, hopefully you understand what I'm saying. There's very few people preaching the Word of God. You have Titus and Dalmatia. Verse 11, only Luke is with me. We're going to get to the end of this chapter, and it's going to show that he's not talking about Christians. He's talking about men in ministry. Only Luke is with me. Brothers in Christ, you know the hardest thing about being in ministry is when some days when you feel like you're all alone. Only Luke is with me. Well, there's brethren out there. I know that now that in, in this day and age, because of technology, I'm speaking through a video on, on the internet and everything, that there's other brothers on Christ on the internet. But right now, here, physically here, I'm the only one here. There's no other uh, brethren with me, helping me in ministry. Paul was never for a one-man show. I want to throw that out there real quick. Paul was never for the one-man show, but it seems like in these last days, it's like we're either being forced to it, or we're getting okay with it, being part of a one-man show. Okay, we're not supposed to be a one-man show. They're supposed to be men in ministry working together. And it seems like everybody's trying to do it on their own. And it's tough. He says, only Luke is with me. He said, take Mark and bring him with thee. So Mark's somewhere else too. That he's saying, Timothy, bring Mark with you. I need help in the ministry. Only Luke is with me. I need more men to come help me in ministry. Okay. And bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Verse 12, And Tychus have I sent to Ephesus. Verse 13, The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee and the books, but especially the parchment. parchments. 14, Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Notice he's not mocking him. Notice he's not putting him down, making fun of him, making jokes. He's saying, Lord, Reward him according to his works. You give them to the, war, to the Lord. Now as a Christian, know how the Bible talks about no man can take him out of my Father's hand, no man can take him out of my hand. As Christians, being in the Lord's hand is the best place to be. But when it comes to the lost world, whether it's a brother in Christ that's fallen away, that's wronged you, or when it comes to the lost world, putting him in God's hands and saying, Hey, Lord, reward, uh, reward him according to his works. Lord, you deal with them. I'm going to put them without, you deal with them. Okay? That's why we put brethren out of our uh, fellowship. So God will chasten them, get them back on the right path, so our fellowship can open up again. Okay? I miss fellowship with some of the brethren these last days, but it seems like everybody's getting distracted by cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, uh, lust of other things. Sin comes in and it starts getting in the way of fellowship, and they think that sin is more important than fellowship. There's some brethren that will try to defend their sin and say, I don't believe it's sin. But is that still worth losing fellowship with the brethren? No. Okay. But you give them to the Lord. That's the whole point of putting someone out of your fellowship. That's the whole point when it comes to the lost world. You don't argue with the lost world. You don't get into debates with the lost world. You don't start mocking the lost world. You don't start being, you know, snotty and... and um, name calling that's what they do what you do is you give them to God you point out what they're doing wrong and you give them to God that's what Paul just did here he said verse 14 Alexander the Constantine did me much evil he pointed out what he did wrong he did me much evil I know it's not specifics but he did me much evil the Lord reward him according to his works of whom be thou where also for he hath greatly withstood our words he also warned Timothy, don't worry about talking to him. He's withstood our words. You'll just be uh, wasting your words. 
casting pearls before swine. <laughs> kind of want to do another study on that verse, but uh, casting pearls before swine and casting that which is holy unto the dogs. Holy is commandments of God. When you see, be ye holy as I am holy, it's the commandments of God. Are you obeying the commandments of God? Don't cast the commandments of God to people who don't want it. Pearls before, uh, pearls before swine. Don't cast your pearls, uh, which is wisdom, instruction. Remember it says, buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom, instruction, and understanding. I hope I got the three right. Okay, That's what that pearl represents. When people don't want the truth, they don't want instruction, they don't want understanding, you don't cast pearls before them. So that's what he's saying here. Of whom I, of thou where, thou where also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. At my first answer no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. I believe he's talking about ministry. There's times periods in people's ministries, I know Brother Brian can attest to this, where it seems like there's a lot of men backing him, wanting to be part of the ministry, and the next thing you know, it just feels like you're all by yourself. Okay? He's got the better testimony than me. I've only been in ministry for three years. He's been in ministry for 17 years. He does things that are, I believe he does some things that are wrong. Okay? Uh, but I'm not going to treat him like an enemy. Yeah. We talked about that with our Bible by the ocean side, uh, that verse about uh, you're not supposed to treat him as an enemy. Anybody you put without, you're not to treat him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Uh, he's still a brother in Christ. I disagree with him on some things that I believe are sin issues, not salvation issue, sin issue, liberty issues, okay? And, all right, but I'm still not going to treat him like an enemy. But I pray, it says, men forsook me. I pray, God, that it be, that it may not be laid to their charge. That's what, I don't pray for evil. See, that's what Paul is saying. You don't pray for evil when you have men that you put out of your fellowship or that you see fall away. You don't pray for evil, that evil, wicked things happen to them, okay? Lord, watch over them, take care of them, get them back on the right track. Okay? It's not the same as when he's talking about Alexander the coffersmith that did me much evil. He doesn't want the Word of God. He doesn't, if you talk about it, it has to do, what I believe it's he's talking about, is um, he came to a place where uh, Dianus, I think it is Diana or Dianus, a false god, and these coppersmiths, they would make false gods, and that was their trade. That's how they made money. And when he came and started preaching the true God, Jesus Christ, and turning people away from that, they started losing their money. And the coppersmiths, how they treated them was just evil and wicked how they treated Paul and them. Um, they didn't want Jesus Christ. They didn't want the truth. But notice the difference between Paul saying, Lord, reward the lost person, the lost heathen that rejects Jesus Christ, reward him according to his works. But then when he's talking about brethren that are falling away, he's saying, lay it not to their charge. In other words, don't reward them according to their works. Please, Lord, watch over them, have mercy on them. Get them back on the right track. Right. Verse 17, Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. No one says that the Lord stood with me. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I keep coming across all these teachings. That's, how do you explain that? You know, when it comes to the Bible version issue, Peter Ruckman does that. So I've heard somebody else do that. And it's like, it's so easy to explain that verse when you're saved, comparing Scripture to Scripture. I'm not saying those people are lost. I believe Peter Ruckman saved. He's just was very spoiled by philosophy. Um, but the whole point is, is it's through Christ. When you can't do something, it's because you're not going through Christ. God doesn't want you going that direction. That's why it's not working. Or you've let sin into your life, and why do you sin? Because you're not going through Christ. When you sin, you're going through the flesh, the lusts of the flesh. Okay. But right there we see, the Lord stood with me. Paul, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. And it says, and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. What's that mouth of the lion it's talking about? Well, Jesus warned us. Who goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour? 
Satan, the devil. Right? So Paul was delivered out of the devil's hands by the Lord. And brothers in Christ, when you try to get into ministry, the, the, the devil's not going to like it. Satan's not going to like it. He's going to do everything he can to try to destroy your ministry, destroy you as a man, and God's going to deliver you out of it time and time and time and time again. God's going to deliver you out of it. The sun's coming out, praise the Lord. <laughs> um, let's hurry up and wrap this up, because I don't know how the camera's looking <laughs> when I looked at it. It's verse 18, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, that goes for every Christian. He's going to chasten you, he's going to correct you, and he's going to protect you from every evil work of the lost world that they try to do to you. Okay? He's going to try to deliver you from it. But it says, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me. Preserve me. Remember what he said earlier. I have fought a good fight. Verse 7. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. It says, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. That's what we're striving for, brothers and sisters in Christ. Verse 19. I'll scoot forward a little bit. <laughs> Verse 19. Here's how we know that when he says only Luke is with me, he's not talking about Christians as a whole. Okay? He's talking about men in ministry. Because it says this, verse 19, Salute Priscilla and Aquila and the household of Nephris. Evidently, that's where Titus, or Timothy, I'm sorry, that's where Timothy is. He's saying, say hello to those brothers and sisters in Christ for me. Verse 20, Aristus abode in Corinth, but Trophimus have I left in Miltum sick. See, there's other brethren in ministry, it's just some are sick, some had to be sent over here, but as far as physically with Paul, only Luke is physically with Paul. We tend to grab this and say, well, only Luke is with Paul, that means there's no other Christians with them. Let's keep reading. Verse 21 says, Do thy diligence to come before winter. Here it is. I'm bad with names, so please forgive me. Eubulus greeteth thee, and Pudens, and Linus, and Claudia, and all the brethren. The Lord Jesus Christ be with thy spirit. Grace be with thee. Amen. Okay, what's going on here? He's saying, all these brethren that are with me, brothers and sisters in Christ, they salute you. They say hello. How many times have you been on the phone and you've had someone walk by that says, who's on the phone? And you say so-and-so, and they're like, oh, say hello for me. And you're like, oh, so-and-so says hello. That's what this letter is saying. There's, those are Christians that are with Paul, present tense. So when he says, only Paul, only Luke is with me, he's talking about men in ministry. That's what he's talking about. As we get closer and closer, even in Paul's day, he had a hard time with men staying in ministry. And I remember that verse that talks about where Paul, uh, Jesus is saying that many are called, but few are chosen. Okay, A lot of people using it for instruction and righteousness, there's a lot of men that get called into ministry. But there are very few of them stick with it, and God chooses them and says, Okay, you're sticking with it, you're qualified, I'm going to start using you. Okay? And that's how it's always been down through the years. There's always been certain men that stick out from everybody because God's like, okay, I can use you. You're in a position that I can use you. But as we see there, there's brethren there. Okay? I just want to do this quick reading to remind people that, hey, there's brothers and sisters in Christ out there. Okay? There's a lot of us still out there, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's just there's few men in ministry. And I've seen men that their ministry isn't as strong as they used to be. It's because they've, they've let cares of this world get in the way. That's why I did those studies, brothers and sisters of Christ. I didn't do those studies to offend the brethren. I didn't do those studies to mock the brethren. I did those studies to encourage the brethren that in these last days, it's desperately, you need to make sure that you don't have cares, in, especially young men in ministry, that the cares of this world is not getting in the way of your being fruitful in the ministry and preaching the word. Like Paul just told Timothy to do. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Good times and hard times. Whether it's popular, whether it's not popular. Okay? You need to be preaching the word. Period. There is no excuse. Well, you know, I had to do this, or I had to do that. No. 
You're supposed to be preaching the word. Well, I don't get paid enough. No, it doesn't matter. Money doesn't play a factor whatsoever when it comes to you preaching the word of God. Where is money mentioned in that passage? Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Why? Because Paul knew even in his time that there were brethren falling away, men in ministry. And there was few workers. And these last days were desperate to stick to the word. And I'm trying, brother and sister Christ, I'm trying to. There's days where I'm like, Lord, do I really? Is it really? It just the, my flesh is just getting me down. Cares of this world's trying to get me down. Uh, deceitfulness of riches. People ask, why don't you take donations? Because I want to be content with food and raiment. I've noticed, brethren, that they get they start falling into the trap where it's about money. Okay, it's we need to be content with food and raiment, and it's about preaching the word of God. Whether you get paid or not, it's about preaching the word of God. Now the Lord has blessed me with the retirement, so I have food and raiment. That's why I'm trying to be content with food and raiment. But don't let money become a factor. It's about the money. It's about the money. Okay, there's there's hard times. I, there could be very hard times coming up for the body of Christ, and the men in ministry are going to have to learn to be dirt poor again and live dirt poor. I still stand by what I said. The best preaching I've ever heard came from men when they were poor. They were living hard lives where they didn't have hardly anything. All they had was this, and this is all that mattered to them. They start accumulating a lot of things in this world. This starts to suffer in their life. Okay. Doesn't have to be. It just tends to be. That's why I preach deceitfulness of riches. Being content. If I have a little bit more, I'll be content. I'm so used to having this much of of living money, and then if I have to go down to here, I won't be content anymore. What did Paul say? Paul said that I. Whatever, whatever state that I am in, I've learned to be content. Whatever state God has me in, therewith be content. He was getting blessed one time where it was way above what he's normally used to. It's great blessings. But he had to correct himself and say, listen, but remember, I've learned to be content with whatever state God has me in. I might be poor again. I might have to go through some hard times again. I've got to keep my heart focused on being content with food and raiment. Right. That's why I preach those. Sin. Sin comes in and starts getting in the way of, of brethren in ministry. That gets in the way of the walk. All those three things get in the way of the walk of the brethren. And start getting in the way of the fellowship among the brethren. That's why I was desperately trying to get those out. To preach those to people. And some people, I believe that that they learned from it and it helped them and then there were some people where it just fell on deaf ears okay only Luke is with me there's very few men in ministry and I know that if I let's I, I pray it never happens but if I fell away but the Brian falls away God would raise up other men to keep the word going heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away but we're few in number what I what we need, brother and sister Christ, is prayer. Number one, we need prayer. That's the number one support. The second way that you can support a ministry is showing fruit that that ministry is working in you. When, when There's times where I get no comments, nobody's saying anything, and it's like, am I really helping the brothers and sisters in Christ? Am I reaching you guys? The fruit that we see, men in ministry, the fruit that we see in the brethren, encourage us in ministry. When you don't see that fruit, we got to go somewhere else. But it also discourages us. You want to support a ministry, you support it with prayer, and you support it by fruit in your life. Heeding the words of that ministry. Okay? And then lastly, if God has blessed you, and you have funds above the what you need, not want, need, by all means, try to help out some of the ministries that are, that's their primary source of income is donations okay by all means but you first need to be praying for them and you need to make sure that the words that they're preaching you're taking it to heart and you're living it and they see the fruit in it that encourages us when we see fruit from our preaching when we see people get saved from our preaching uh, men in ministry that encourages us okay what gets us depressed you know man's being a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief 
is when these last days there's just fewer and fewer people and we don't see the fruit as much and brethren are falling apart people are fighting our brother people that I believe are saved are fighting amongst each other uh, they're fighting amongst they're fighting me and it's like it's very discouraging so uh, sorry about talking for too much brothers and sisters in Christ I'm sorry for the lighting because the sun's coming out and the seating and everything I just brothers and Christ I can't implore enough that only Luke is with me we're in the last days the brethren are falling apart the falling away men in ministry you need to stay strong but make sure you're living right okay make sure you're not holding on to stuff that's that's getting in the way of your walk with the Lord that's getting in the way of your fellowship with the brethren it's not worth it video games movies TV shows satanic style music it's not worth it Christmas pagan holidays it's not worth it and yet there's some brethren that still believe it is it's not worth it brothers what's what, what's more important the Word of God fellowship your fellowship with the Lord and fellowship among the brethren preaching the plan of salvation getting that last soul saved keeping people's eyes on Jesus Christ in these last days that's what Paul is talking about I've kept the faith. What happened to the one guy? D Demas, I think is what it was. It, it was. Um, make sure I got the, the name right. What happened to him? He took his eyes off Jesus Christ. Yep, yeah, Demas. He took his eyes off Jesus Christ. And that's my big focus with this ministry. Lately, I know I've said the ministry is about promoting prayer, which it is, still is. Promoting words have meaning. But lately, the biggest promotion out of all of this, words have meaning, prayer, and everything, it's all about keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ and your walk with the Lord strong. I can't push that enough, brothers and sisters of Christ, to keep your walk with the Lord, as a, keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. We're getting distracted by this world. This wicked world is falling. It's always been falling apart. It's just worse today than it was 10 years ago. But it's always falling apart. It's always been going contrary to Scripture. Okay? That's the way the world is. Don't get too distracted by the world that it gets in the way of your walk with the Lord. Men in ministry, don't get too distracted by the world that you stop preaching the Word of God as far as Bible studies. Good, thorough Bible studies. Okay, this was a Bible reading. It wasn't a good, thorough Bible study comparing Scripture with Scripture. But I just want to encourage the brethren that to keep standing, keep praying, and keep showing good fruit, being a light to this world. You're not just a light to the world as far as the lost world. You're a light to brothers and sisters in Christ. All right. So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you in Christ Jesus, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay, that's where my love comes from. Okay, it's always going to be through the Word of God and through Jesus Christ. So uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.